This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Dean Show. In this way of life, this way of life that was brought by all the messengers of God, that called people to nothing but goodness, didn't leave out anything in one's life. A complete, complete blueprint on how a person should live their life from A to Z. That's right. And it didn't even leave out our next topic. That's right. A billion dollar industry. That's not really brought anything good though. Produced a lot of money and has got a lot of people addicted. What is this? You're going to have to sit tight for our next topic that many people are going to be really amazed that we're even talking about. Can we talk about this? Is this something that we should shy away from? All this and more here on The Dean Show. Sit tight. We'll be right back. This is The Dean, The Dean Show. This is 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 the Dean Show. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be with you. Peace be with you too. Now how are you, Imam? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing good, Eddie, yeah. and it's so good to be with you. Thank you for finding the time to be with us. Now you're the director of mental health. Can you explain for our viewing audience what is what people have mental issues, they come and see you, what does this mean? You're, you're, what, explain to us. Well, it's part of an organization that I work at, Access um, California Family Resource Center. And basically, it's a holistic approach to help people with their problems. So we've got different departments. So it's immigration, it is housing, it is welfare, it is financial assistance. But also, all these things can really press, and they can really generate a lot of emotional stress on the individual or the family. So that holistic approach is, can we help people in their totality, rather than just take care of the housing, but not addressing their familial problems or their emotional problems. And people have this impression that um, mental challenges or mental health challenges are like schizophrenia, crazy people, insane people. And the reality is there is just so much emotions that can really be bothersome and challenging to the individual. A person who does not have legal status, they can develop anxiety as a result. A person who's having a problem with their loved ones, a person who just relocated from one place to another adjustment issues. Uh, sometimes it's just family problems, couples having issues with one another. So when we speak about mental health, we're not just talking about people that need to be medicated. We're talking about people who are having problems just because they're humans. That is just part of the challenge that we have as, as humans. And I happen to be in charge of that, uh, of that program. Well, mashallah, that you find a time to be with us here. So before we dwell into our topic, I introduced the show and I said, look, we follow this way of life. I didn't even mention the name, all right? Because a lot of times, you know, a person will be so qualified for the job and then in the past, you know, the person had all the credentials, but he was African-American. He didn't get the job. So sometimes when people hear, because they're a little bit timid of this word, and I'll say it in, in, in a second, but I want to define it. It's a way of life that was lived by all the messengers of God, including Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, peace be upon him, the Christ, and the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Mm -hmm. It's a way of calling a human being to submit to the one creator alone and to do good, to develop good and noble character. And it doesn't shy away from anything. But sometimes, I didn't even mention the word yet, when we mention it, some people are going to get a little timid, a little bit afraid, but pornography, it's addictive. And many people are under this hypnosis spell, and now it's corrupting homes, corrupting societies. But is this something that now is relevant in Islam? Does Islam, I said the word, does Islam now uh, come and even address, and, 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 and are, are we, should we shy away from talking about something like this? Yeah. Well, let me just begin by appreciating uh, you addressing this topic, Eddie. And the point being is that you could have chosen a much safer topic 
to talk about. But the reality is the messengers were sent in order to guide people and they would address the challenges that the masses are facing at this point. So pornography, you said it was a billion dollar industry. It's a billion dollar industry a month in the U.S. Every month? Every month in the U.S. It's a billion dollar industry. Wow. So the one billion dollar is not worldwide, it's not annually. It's monthly only in the U.S. Estimation annually, it's about $52 billion. And with technology, it is probably going to jump a lot more than that. But then, um, like you said you know, in your introduction, you said that this is a way of life from A to Z. And when we say it's a way of life, we're not talking about a way of life that dictates, but rather it's a way of life that really disciplines. It's a way of life that guides. And if you look into the whole idea of Islam, I mean, one of the most important pillars of what Islam, of what Jesus and Moses and Noah and Muhammad, peace be upon all, peace be upon all of them taught, is this whole idea of the subjugation of the passion. And that is teaching self-control and self-discipline, where the person is in charge of what they become and who they are, rather the other way around having their desires and their lust and their different emotions be out of control, producing who they become, rather the person being in charge of what their destiny is going to be, is going to be like. So Islam did not leave this out at all. It addressed it because it's a human need, 